This is day eight of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new video each day with a six mark question so that you can practice answering it and see how many marks you would have got. You can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also you can access all of the previous videos in the playlist. Without wishing to sound like too much of a geek, this is one of my all time favourite GCC science questions. But before we dive in and answer it, let's just remind ourselves of a couple of things. Firstly, there are no marks in GCC science for writing in full sentences. You need to lay your answer out in a logical fashion so that your examiner can follow it, but that could just as easily be bullet points, numbered lists or tables. A table is particularly great for a question like this one because we've got three different aspects to the question to cover and two different substances. And this is going to make it really easy for your examiner to see that you've actually compared them. It's also going to make it really easy for you to see that you have actually answered the full question and not just left part of it unanswered. So if you haven't already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. This question is perfect for laying out your answer as a table because there are three distinct parts to it and two different substances. So by using a table, you make it really clear that you've covered all of your bases. Firstly, you're asked about the structure and the bonding, and it's really important that you've covered both of those in your answer. We're asked about both sodium fluoride and fluorine, and it's really important that you've covered both of those. And finally, the actual question is, why is sodium fluoride a solid and fluorine a gas? And you need to make sure that you've answered that as well. So I'd start by laying out your answer as a table. And you might look at this and think, well, I've never really encountered sodium fluoride and I don't really know much about fluorine. But what you are supposed to know is that all of the elements that are in group seven have very similar bonding and very similar properties. So even though you're not specifically familiar with fluorine, you are familiar with chlorine. And from that, you should be able to work out how to do this question. So the first thing I would do is look at my periodic table if I wasn't sure and identify that sodium fluoride contains a metal and a non-metal and therefore is an ionic substance, whereas fluorine is on the non-metallic side in group seven and so it's a covalent substance. Then based on that, I can say that sodium fluoride forms a giant ionic lattice. So that's its structure. Whereas in contrast, fluorine is a small covalent molecule. So it's not one of those giant covalent structures like diamond or graphite. It's just made of small molecules containing two atoms. Then I can think about what the actual bonding is. So an ionic bond is a strong electrostatic force of attraction between oppositely charged ions. And when that happens, thousands of sodium atoms are each going to transfer one electron to thousands of chlorine atoms to make our sodium plus ions and our chloride minus ions. The covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. So you've got two atoms and they're both contributing one electron to that bond. Now, in between those molecules, we have weak intermolecular forces. So there's the strong covalent bond in the middle of the molecule, but the weak intermolecular forces between them. And that's going to be important. We know that each one of these molecules only contains two atoms. So they're much, much smaller than our giant ionic lattice. And then we can start to think about these states. So that strong electrostatic force of attraction takes a lot of energy to overcome. And it's important here that we're using the word energy. Often I see answers where students have written, so it's really hard for it to be overcome or it takes a lot of effort. But you need to be talking in terms of energy because that's the important thing. Because if there isn't enough energy, it's not going to happen. So therefore, the reason that sodium fluoride is a solid at room temperature is that room temperature doesn't provide enough energy and that's going to give it a high melting point. Then if we contrast that with the fluorine, it's not that the covalent bonds are weak, which is something that we see people writing a lot. The covalent bonds are really, really strong, but they do not need to be overcome. What needs to be overcome is the weak intermolecular force. So that weak force only takes a very little amount of energy to overcome, and therefore the boiling point is lower than room temperature. This is a really common question, which has come up several times with different substances. So we've got a really good idea of what it's actually going to take to get six marks. Firstly, because they've named two different substances, in order to get into level three and get five or six marks, you need to have discussed both of them. Even if you've written a perfect answer telling us everything there is to know about sodium fluoride, you can't get more than four marks for it. 
The second thing that you need to have done to get into level three and get five or six marks is that you have to have actually answered the question and talked about why sodium fluoride is a solid and fluorine is a gas. So we need some kind of reference to the amount of energy taken to overcome the forces between those particles. And then because this question has this added extra bit at the end about what state it is, actually in the past, AQA have credited you level three as long as you've discussed either structure or bonding. You should be careful, though, because sometimes a question like this comes up and it doesn't have that added extra at the end about them being different states. And if that happens, then they separate out the structure and the bonding and you need to have done one of them to get into level two and then both of them to get into level three. So today you can have six marks as long as you've talked about sodium fluoride and fluorine and their different states and why and either structure or bonding. But when you're practicing these questions, I would really focus on making sure that you are doing both just in case you get one of these questions where you do need to have referred to both to get all the marks. Tomorrow we'll be back for day nine of the six mark challenge and this time we're back in physics paper one looking at another one of the required practicals. Don't forget there is a link in the description below to all of the questions for this week's videos and also there is a playlist of all of the previous videos so you can go back and watch them if you missed them on the day. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I'll see you back tomorrow for day nine of the six mark challenge. If you have found this video useful in your GCC science revision, don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC science revision videos coming soon.